Welcome to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now. Brought to you in part by Isola. Inspired women's footwear. Isola's collections are perfectly suited to discerning women seeking exquisite design. Visit the website at isolashoes.com. I-S-O-L-A shoes.com. We'll be right back with your host and her guest right after this from Isola. Isola is a luxe collection of elegant, distinctive footwear for the modern woman. Inspired by the finest things in life with intricate details, lavish materials, and sumptuous comfort. Isola's refined artistry and impeccable styling are perfectly suited to the discerning woman who knows that exquisite doesn't have to mean extravagant. Visit our website at isolashoes.com, I-S-O-L-A shoes.com. Hey guys, how are you doing? This is your host, Gail Scott Key. I'm so excited to have you along because I have a very exciting guest standing by that I am going to bring on the air with me in just a few. It's a host, Chris Maggard, the search existence unknown. I don't know if you guys have seen this on Roku Reality TV, but uh, I've had the pleasure of having my dear friend Chris on my show several times before. And of course, we're talking spooksters. We're talking about ghosts. So everything you wanted to know, or maybe you're too scared to know, he'll take care of it for you. And we're going to have a great time coming up with him in just a few. I want to know how you guys are doing. And uh, the only way I can find out is if you guys, you know, let's be friends. You can hook up on Facebook and you can become Gail Scott Keys Entertainment Now Facebook fan. Really, really easy. And while you're already there at the keyboard, just go ahead, click away. We'll be friends. I promise I will accept it. I've always been a Prince fan, always. And unfortunately, I never had the pleasure of interviewing the artist himself. So what I've done, the next best thing, of course, is speaking to the former mentor and producer of the late music icon Prince, who is back in the 70s. They had formed a band. Pepe Willie is going to be my guest. He's the author, publisher, and producer of the 94 East. So if you guys are old school, you know what I'm talking about because it featured Prince, Andre Simone, who was part of Prince's group, and Pepe Willie. And that was all back in 1986. But now we're going to bring you up to speed because now Pepe Willie is the manager of a new artist. His name is Gabriel. Now, Gabriel sounds a lot like Prince. He doesn't want to say it, but he does. He has his own new style, you guys, and you have to check it out. Uh, Pepe is going to be on my show. He's going to introduce Gabriel, and they're going to talk about some exciting things that you guys do not want to miss. So make sure that you're tuning in. And also, any shows that you've missed, um, I also have them on YouTube. So anytime you want to see any previously recorded shows, you can go right onto YouTube and, and do your following there, which I appreciate. And um, talking about following, I know I've been doing something personal on my Facebook page, which Chris is a fan of, and, and I'm excited. Um, my husband, yes, has been creating this miniature little house. I can tell you there's no ghosts in there. I don't know. Maybe uh, I got to find out from Chris. How about that? Well, my special guest, as I said, is a dear friend, and he has been on my show previously times before. And let me just tell you this. Um, he, has, he is the host of the Search Existence Unknown, okay? I'm going to put this up. I'm going to put the trailer up on my Facebook page because it's scary. Don't watch it by yourself. Don't watch it in the dark. Don't do all those things that scare you. But it is cool. And just a little bit of background on my guest. Uh, Chris started his research in Southern California back in 1981, and he's done a lot of studies in the supernatural. He is my go-to supernatural guy. Now, years later, Chris found himself in Northern Kentucky, not because he was levitating or, or you know, none of that stuff. He found himself there after forming TSP. Now, he's covered several locations from the Midwest to East, and he's even made guest appearances on one of my second best ghost shows, My Ghost Adventures. And I am really, really excited to bring him back. So without further ado, standing by is my dear friend, Chris Maggard. Chris, how are you this evening? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> out of breath no <laughs> <laughs> it is so funny I'm so glad to have you back and, and we're actually intruding in on Chris because I understand you're doing some editing and stuff in your own studio for your show that's coming up right 
Yeah, actually I am uh, for a new episode, and I'm filming this weekend at Scarefest in Lexington, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Nice. Now, can you give it a little bit of uh, some tease on what we're going to see when, you, when you're done filming that, or, or no? Well, actually, it's uh, for a magician that's going to be uh, performing there this weekend. His name is Reed Masterson. Um, he is phenomenally awesome. That's all I can say. Um, <laughs> you got Chris Angel, and then in my book, you got Reed Masterson right next to him. So uh, this guy's phenomenal, and uh, I can't wait to film him this weekend. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be amazing. Um, What I I want to do is is let's get the history. Um, I know I gave a little bit of a background for you, but you've been in this for a long time studying about the paranormal. What got you interested, and and was it what you expected as you've been in this for quite some time now? Um, That's a really good question. Um, well, the first part of what got me into this was uh, the personal tax on my family when I was younger from an unknown force, entity, as we some would like to call it. Um, mm. it. It attacked my sister, and to um, make a long story short, it was pretty damaging to her, and uh, physically, uh, the attacks were horrendous, and uh, it, 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 it caused a lot of physical damage to her, cut her, bleed, made her bleed. So um, from that point on, I just started reading books to understand how can something that we cannot see cause so much damage to a, a living. And so fast forward, here I am today, and um, it's changed. Um, things are not exactly what I expected. Um, mm-hmm. And I think over the years, it's gotten a little bit more, I don't know, it's 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 gone so mainstream now. So it's... Um, it, yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot of people got to be very careful. I think you know how you present yourself with the mainstream today, and uh, with everything is, you know, if you say the wrong, you know, anything is can be seen on the internet. So, you know, right. um, you got to be very careful how you b- present yourself, and you know, and I strongly say, you know, when you present yourself with what you're, you're doing, be strictly honest with yourself before you present it to anybody else. And so um, you raise a good. I, go ahead. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Go finish up because you have a good point now, and I wanted to lead into something with that with you. So I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. Well, I guess you know, once you're honest with yourself and you're presenting what you find and what you're doing out there, it's it's you're you're facing an audience that's throughout the whole planet because the internet is the whole planet. So, um, <laughs> excuse me. So I guess you know with. That being said, it's like now with the search of this is unknown, we're we're not saying we're going into the paranormal or that's getting paranormal. We're we're looking into the unknown and trying to figure out what exactly we're dealing with. So that's where we are today. And I'm still on that quest trying to figure out how can something hurt my sister so bad. And uh, mm. and so and I, I've been attacked. I've been you know slapped in the face in the middle of a hallway. <laughs> so. What? Oh, and, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. And my crew, they've wow. all had extremely personal experiences, crazy ones. And so, you know, that's where we are today. But now I'm taking it to a whole new, different direction. You know, you bring up a good point, and this is exactly uh, when you were talking about the Internet, because um, everybody who has a, 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 an iPhone, like I do, Now they have these apps you can download. You, too, can be a ghost hunter. But what I've looked at, and I was doing my homework, is they have the reviews. Now, you have your skeptics and you have your believers. But there's one that was pretty frightening. It's very frightening. And it basically, um, you know, if you download any of this stuff, Chris, I I really want to take advantage because you are, as I said, the go-to person for for the paranormal and i say that because i have a lot of respect for how you conduct it and what has led you into this profession and as i said i underline there are also skeptics but let's be clear when someone is downloading these apps and as you said you can go on the internet and everything you're leaving yourself open because aren't these almost like miniature uh type of um ouija boards if you will like a new age ouija board uh Educate us about what you're seeing and your thoughts on that. Well, here, you know, I, I've heard that before. You know, people, you know, 
they're they're getting more opened up to the things that are around us and and the thing is that you know a lot of people got to understand is that whether we believe it or not um if we take the whole aspect of the supernatural ghost entities and we think about our planet and how long the humans human race has been on this planet someone has died just about every inch on this planet whether horribly you know just un, unexpected whatnot um so with that being said you could be going grocery shopping and for all you know there's five ghosts walking around in that store with you and you don't even know it now <clears throat> so it's basically it's all around us all the time but now if you're opening yourself up to it and you got the mindset like all right now i'm going to download this entertainment app because they're all they say in the clause entertainment purposes only some guy in in his home or in his office has made this app thinks it's really cool and knows it's going to sell so it's based with money behind it so you're thinking, okay, I'll sell it. People will download it for free. You know, I got sponsors and all that, so it's going to turn out really awesome. But now, but people are in their mindset are thinking, oh man, I'm actually talking to a ghost. So that app probably is not inviting the ghost, but your mindset is. Hmm. So you might be playing with a toy, whether it's Ghost app or you know the Evox app or whatever it is. It's still just the toys, entertainment purposes, but your mindset is opening up to it. And that's where you can actually create some situations that could be potentially harmful for yourself or even scare the crap out of yourself because your mind is so powerful. And I try to try to tell people that don't let your mind overtake what's going on. Be a little bit honest that is very- about what you're doing. What's that? That's that's why I love having you on the show because you know you you set us straight. And for those of you at home who are tuning in, you are listening to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now, and I am joined with my dear friend and host of the Search Existence Unknown. It's on Roku Roku Reality TV, and uh, we're getting an education. Chris knows his stuff. You can check him out on Facebook and also online tspnorthernkentucky.com. And let's talk about your crew that consists of the search existence unknown and you guys have been doing locations from the midwest to the east so if you would be so kind to introduce your your crew so as we're watching this we'll know oh yeah that's the one so let, let's get to know your crew a little bit okay well you know um there's some changes with the crew so you know um uh right now we have uh chris deadman who's uh is very well known um you've actually seen him on many channels like discovery history channel and uh <clears throat> then we have uh, he's also a demonologist and we have robert buckstar who's new to the crew he's a really great guy and you know he's 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 got this this intuition that's just really phenomenal and then derek mack who's been with me since day one since i started the whole tsp thing out here in northern kentucky in the beginning and so, and then there's me. Um, so now, you know, we're taking everything to a new direction now. And what the crew's doing now is not your basic ghost show, as some would say. It's more of uh, urban X exploration, which we're uh, tapping into the forgotten history that so many people t- tend to forget. So uh, our episodes are now going to be mixed with a little bit of ghost hunting, but also more exploratory on the history, why this place was built, what it did for a community, who's still alive and how much it meant to them. Because our history is being replaced with modern technology and we can't forget it. I have been a big fan of yours, as you know, for a long time. And the reason I am, I have a lot of respect for you and how you conduct a lot of these you know, investigations. And as I said earlier in the intro, um, I did see you uh, guest starring on um, My Ghost Story and also Ghost Adventures as well. And what I love, Chris, is that you're always real. I mean, I've even spoken to you about experiences. How do you deal, though, with the skeptics, you know, when they're like, oh, that's you know, there that's hogwash. There's nothing going on. Do you try your best to convince them or just say, Hey, you know, let it be, let it be. How do you handle that? Actually, actually, I love skeptics <laughs> because 
I was a full on believer when I was younger. This I believed everything. I'm more of a skeptic yeah. now because there's so many things that are being presented that you got to go, okay, hold on. <laughs> Let's mm-hmm. figure out the basics. But I love skeptics because they keep you grounded. And there's some people out there that go, ah, oh, you're just silly. You know, <laughs> I've heard people come up to me, yeah, you're just a ghostbuster. I go, no, I have a proton pack on my back. I'm sorry. And there they go, you going ghost hunting? They say, you going to go ghost hunting? I'm like, no, I don't go to Walmart and get my ghost hunting license. Nope, I don't do that. <laughs> oh, darn. Now, see, everybody's going to be like, wait a minute. I was going to go there for my Halloween you know, costume. Now, what are you yeah. going to do? <laughs> you know, I, I guess, awesome. you know, skeptics, it's like I tell skeptics, I'm like, you know what? That's cool. I totally respect your decision. You know, you can't make anybody believe something that they don't understand. And it's like, and like I tell them, it's that's cool you don't believe it. And if something happens to you, then that's when you might believe it. It's got to happen to them. You can't just sit there and go, you know, come here. Let me show you what a ghost looks like. There you go. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure a lot of the listeners are just like, wait a minute, I, I get that. I, I, I'm, I'm feeling these things going on. And, and if you're brand new, tuning in, thank you so much. And I have my dear friend, host of the Search Existence Unknown Urban X, Chris Maggard. Chris Maggard is also on Facebook, so you can follow him. Uh, the show is also on Roku TV, reality TV. And uh, you've been doing this for some time. And what I want to ask you also is there's been like a lot of movies that, um, you know, there's one that we saw cases, okay, Amityville, the Amityville house, everybody's seen that. Then there's one in England across the pond about this little girl who was uh, possessed by an elderly man who had supposedly, you know, died in a chair in that home. And she was thoroughly infected, the whole family. And you know, when you're going into different cases like this, what are some of the biggest cases that you've investigated and what did you and your team personally find? I mean, were there some that really had your hair standing up on, on end or there were some that you're just like, you know what, it's not haunted, we're out of here? Well, there's two cases that really stick into my mind. <clears throat> One, I, we did a short episode called um, <clears throat> Demons. It was about this girl. Uh, my uh, ex-team member, my friend, uh, Patrick Shields, we got a call at like 1 a.m. in the morning. And this lady was freaking out. She says, I, I'm being attacked by demons right now. I can see them writing on my skin and stuff like this. And we're going, oh, wow. What? And we're like, this is happening now. She goes, yes. Like, okay. So we gather up our, our gear, get in the car at 1 a.m. in the morning, stop by the local police department, give our information, let them know what we're doing and what's going on. Cops looked at us like we're crazy and laughed, and we're like, well, we know. And then uh, <laughs> so we get to the lady's house, and then we don't see nothing. But she's freaking out. And so then I bring my wife in the next time to assess this girl. Come to find out, she was speedballing. And she was taking her mom's wow. medicated um, pain, pain patches and scraping the medicine off the pain patches and taking that medicine and putting it on her tongue while speedballing. And people don't know what speedball is. It's like it's cocaine and, 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 and uh, I think speed mixed together and like that. And it's, they shoot it up. So what that does, it causes hallucinations, elevating of the heartbeat, um, redness of the skin, hot and cold temperatures. And come to find out her own demons was her personal demons, her battle with drugs. So there was no actual demons, but just the drug demon that she was battling with. So there was nothing mm. haunting there. But another one that we did, we did, a family called us, says, you know, my, my kids will not sleep, will sleep, only sleep in our bed. This husband and wife were having problems. You know, they kept hearing stuff going on. Their kids were scared. They went out and sleep in their own rooms. So we went in and investigated this place. And normally what we do we used to go into personal, especially personal homes, personal cases. We would set up voice records as we walked in before we even start setting up just to document everything, the conversation with the family and whatnot. So, you know, protect our own butt. Well, after we're setting up, doing our investigation, then we went home and we reviewed the audio. We listened to the audio while we were setting up. And what we captured, which is the most chilling thing and almost tear jerking thing is you hear this girl and there's no kid in the house because we asked her kids not to be there. So they dropped their kids off at his parents. 
you hear this yeah. little girl going, Mommy, oh, my gosh, Mommy, come here. Come here, Mommy. Oh, my gosh, what are they doing? Oh, my gosh, Mommy. And uh, my what? heart pumps. Yeah. I get chills. Yeah. I get chills. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Little eye right now, totally right now. And it was oh, like the most bizarre thing I've ever yeah, – this child could see us and see what we were doing – and was asking for her mommy, so obviously her mommy was there too, and she was like kind of scared, was wondering who we are and what we're doing. And so what wow. we come to find out, there was a family that died on that property years ago when it was a plantation, and uh, it was a, uh, it was a black family that worked for this gentleman on the farm, and they passed away. Uh, don't know the full details, and I don't want to give him what details we did get of how they passed mm. away, but it was the fact that they uh-huh. were living in the same house with this family that called us. And so we kind of made it to where we sat down. It was kind of like a group meeting. We brought the family that called us and the unseen family, the past life family. Wow. We sat in the living room. We just all talked and said, look, this is their home. They're willing to work with you. You can stay here if you want, but you've got to respect the children yep. and the family yep. of this home. And everything went great from there on. Kids went back to their um, rooms, up in their rooms, and their family was happy. And so it worked out. And But it was the most chilling thing I've ever experienced in my life. Oh, my goodness. I, okay, now I've got the chills, and I, I'm sure you guys do too, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you do. That's why he does what he does, and he is the best at it. It's Chris Maggard, who is the founder of the Search Existence Unknown Urban X, which is on Roku Paranormal Reality TV. Check him out on Facebook. You can also search him out online. Chris, as always, I love, love having you on. And uh, real quick, the last word is going to be yours. What are we going to see coming up for the Halloween season? Um, actually, Halloween season, I am filming a uh, an event with uh, Rob Demarest up in uh, Lake Erie. Well, I think it's Lake Erie, Ohio, or Erie, Pennsylvania. Erie, Pennsylvania, there's an event going on there. And uh, it, we're going to try to broadcast that live as well. So that's going to be a really oh awesome gig right there. And if anybody who doesn't know, Rob Demers is from Ghost Hunters International. So really great guy. Yes. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, so are you, Chris. You are wonderful. And, and we're going to let you get back to your editing and, and getting set for this weekend. Awesome. And uh, once again, you guys, definitely my guest, Chris Maggard host of the search existence unknown you guys need to check it out check him out on facebook as always chris it is such a pleasure to have you You know i certainly want you to come by and uh haunt i mean um talk to me again in maybe the month of (laughs) october sound like a plan sounds like a great plan to me oh wonderful wonderful chris maggard thank you so so much i really really appreciate it all right hon be safe don't take any ghosts home (laughs) (laughs) never (laughs) you have a good night My man, you too, honey. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. And for all of you at home, again, make sure you check him out. You want the facts. You want the reality. Chris Maggard is my go-to paranormal guy who I trust, and I am honored to know him. You guys stick around. We're going to have more coming up in the next half hour of Gail Scott Keys Entertainment now on the new Tap the Mic Radio Network. Inspired women's footwear from Isola. Isola is a luxe collection of elegant, distinctive footwear for the modern woman. Inspired by the finest things in life with intricate details, lavish materials, and sumptuous comfort. Isola's refined artistry and impeccable styling are perfectly suited to the discerning woman who knows that exquisite doesn't have to mean extravagant. Isola is spelled with an I, and the style of your life in sandals, wedges, heels, flats, pumps, or boots with all styles on sale now at IsolaShoes.com. Look for Isola Shoes on Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest, and of course, IsolaShoes.com. That's I-S-O-L-A Shoes.com. IsolaShoes.com. Hi, thank you so much for joining me. I'm your host, Gail Scott Key. How are you doing? I hope well. 
Well, I know I am. I've got lots to cover in this half hour with an extraordinary guest. I've had him on before, and he's on standby on the phone. I'm going to get him on as soon as I can. Um, He is just such a love. He is an extraordinary man who has been in this entertainment business for 46 years. He's got a new show. It's called Ask Angelo, and I am talking about the founder and CEO of Double Exposure, Angelo Ellaby. And you guys have heard me talk about, okay, we're talking class act PR, okay? And I cannot wait to have Angelo on with me in just a few. But with you, I want to invite you to become an Entertainment Now Facebook fan. You'll be in the know of all the guests that I have coming up. As I've announced on my Facebook, I'm so excited. I never had the honor to speak with the legendary icon artist, Prince, but I do have the honor of speaking with his former mentor and producer, and that is Pepe Willie. Pepe Willie is going to be joining me along with a new artist. Um, he's actually not so new, but his name is Gabriel. Gabriel has been uh, working uh, with um, Willie for some time, and they're going to be launching a new CD, which is, I believe, coming out next year, but he's going to tell us all about it. And he's going to take us also, you know, into the times that he had with Prince, so you don't want to miss that. Right now, as I said, I don't want to take any more time away. I have been able to, through Double Exposure books, some of the greatest guests. I'm talking about just as recent, Matthew Knowles, Mr. Matthew Knowles, as you know, who's the father of Beyonce. I've had the pleasure of speaking with him. Also on the TV version of my show, uh, Angelo, I also had uh, a chance to do a lot of other uh, connections. And, and the reason I do that and put it on Facebook is because my guest tonight Night, as I said, is launching a new show. Ask Angelo. Why not? Because I'll tell you, the other stars, stars do. Mary J. Blige, Dionne Warwick. I mean, all the stars are going to him. So guess what? I'm going to him because I want to hear about his new book. And of course, you guessed it. It's called Ask Angelo, an inside look at the entertainment industry from a PR guru. Angelo Ellerby standing by. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me. It is all my pleasure, and thank you for having me. Oh, I love having you on. I love having you on. You you are just class in every way, in every form, and it wouldn't surprise me. First of all, congratulations on your new show. It's a radio show, and I'm so excited. How do, how do you feel being behind the mic? <laughs> you know, this is so this is so strange for me. But I welcomed the opportunity. I welcomed the opportunity. It came to me about a couple years ago. I thought about it, thought about it, and thought that I would be that vessel that would educate and motivate and stimulate people about the entertainment industry. Thus, I said, this is something that I must do. And while doing it, I'm going to also write this book that everybody in the world has been asking me to write for the last 40 something odd years. Why, this book and this radio show is to speak volumes to the entertainment industry. It is for that climber, that one is coming up in the industry, as well as for that veteran. And it's hilarious, it's educational, it's a bunch of strange. <laughs> that has gone on in my life and my career. And so oh I'm goodness. happy about it. I'm very, very happy about the book, and I'm very happy about the radio show. The radio show is on WWSUR Survival Entertainment, 365.com. And I'm on every Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. in the morning. Ah, we share the same Thursdays, just on different stations. How cool is yes. that? That's very cool. Good company, good company. Oh, you are such a sweetheart. You you really are. I I have to tell you personally, um, when you told me uh, that you were writing this book and I saw this, I'm like, get to grab you. I need you on here because this industry is a tricky one, but you have been in it for, as you said, 46 years. In those 46 years, how on earth did you get it into a book? This must have been grueling what to put in, what to leave out, because as you said, how do you go through the process of that? it really wasn't. Let me just tell you. I have I have an incredible partner. Her name is Gianna Gorell. And Gianna has spoke to me and said to me, 
I, do, I know you don't want to do autobiography. I said, no, because if I did that, then I would have to go straight to the funeral parlor and just face up because I'd be dead if I ever wrote the real book. But I said to her, what I will do, what I will do is I will write a book that will speak volumes to my life in the industry as a learning lesson for those who are on the come up, those who are climbing that ladder to success and to those veterans. Let's do that. I want people to learn from me. I don't want yeah. people to experience Angelo's life and all the crazy and vain things that's gone on. But I want them to get I want my legacy to be that he was a teacher, he was a body of information that was free in expressing itself. And that is exactly what we're doing in the book. That is exactly what we're going to do with the guests on my radio show. And my first radio show tapes on the 15th. And I'm very pleased to announce my first guest is an array of people. I am entitling this show, We Are Family. And it's going to deal with the legacy of the Houston family, the Warwick family, the Elliott family, the Drinkards family. This is all from that nest tree of Dion Warwick. So I'm going to speak to I'm going to speak to Sissy Houston. We're going to talk wow. about Whitney Houston. We're going to talk about Sissy Houston's life as a mm-hmm. singer, as a mom, as a performer. Her relationships with Dion Warwick, her relationships with her sister, which is Dion's mom. Then we're going to talk to Dion's granddaughter, who's out singing now, doing great things. We're going to talk about her two sons that are producers, that and one of them produced for uh, Luther Van Ross. And then we're gonna go. We're 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 gonna go down the road, and we're going to just, just explore. The veritables, the trials, the tribulations, the ups, the downs, the headaches, being a family, being in the industry, and what remains, and the legacy continues. That's my first show. As you were explaining all the wonderful guests you have on, you and I both know that being in this industry, it's not something you can ever take for granted. You, of course, being in this industry, you have earned the trust of so many of these wonderful stars. So, of course, it wouldn't surprise me that they are sharing the mic with you, but also sharing their hearts with you. That's not an easy thing that a lot of people can grasp when it comes to doing what we do, correct? Correct. You know, the thing for me, I was taught at a very early age the importance of relationships. I also understood what friendship was. And if you take the word friend and you split it in the middle, you got an N. I don't have friends. I have relationships. Relationships you can trust. Relationships you can depend on. Relationships you know. Mm-hmm. And you have to be very, very mm-hmm. careful with un- understanding the difference in friendships in this industry and relationships. So I would think that I have developed over the many years many relationships. I'm a businessman first, so I'm not going to win a popularity contest with what I go to do. But I do work from the heart, and I do want the betterment yeah. for my clients. But I'm a realist. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to tell you just the way I see it. It's Angelo yeah. with no chaser. <laughs> but if true. we follow or drink from the same cup, we yeah. will be able to explore together, share together, hurt together, win together. And the relationship, not in the <laughs> friendship. Because the friendship split that syllable. It ends. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Very, very true. And I know for those of you who are just tuning in right now, you are listening to Gail Scott Keys Entertainment now. And I am joined by a wonderful, wonderful founder, CEO of Double Exposure, Angelo Ellerby, who has written a new book, Ask Angelo, an inside look at the entertainment industry from a PR guru. And of course, as we've been talking, um, this book, it, it has a lot of great nuggets. But the biggest thing is, as I as I mentioned before, uh, Mary J. Blige, and of course, your dear friend Dion Warwick, as you mentioned before, um, th- this has got to be, now, I'm just curious, what do they ask you? 
I, I would have to ask you that, Steve. <laughs> well, one of the things that Mary would ask me when I – let me just briefly take you through my relationship with Mary J. Blige. You've got to yeah. remember, it was middle middle 90s. Mary was a mm. huge star, beginning star, but huge in yeah. beginning. But she did yeah. not know how to tackle or put her arms around success. She was very much mm. from the urban community, very much to where I come from, so I can relate totally where she was coming from. Mm. But I needed to get her to understand the importance of being an artist. First day she came to yeah. me, she was two hours late. I looked at her and I said, I'm on my way to lunch. Why don't we try this again tomorrow? Mm. Yikes. She, Yikes. Came, she came two hours earlier the next day. And we sat back and we had conversation. Yeah. I started with all of my trials and my tribulations because the key thing is to get people to trust you. Yes. And they're yes. not going to trust you if you're not giving out any of your goods. That's right. Relatability. That's right. Yes. And I yes. had to make it relatable. And yep. then she started to tell me about her plights. Mm. And then she also said, she said, somebody told me you don't listen to music, artist music. I said, no, I don't, because I don't sell music. I sell talent. Mm. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I did listen to this one song. And it was, she played it in the office. She got up, she went to the stereo. She said, would you just listen to this one? And it was going, if you can see what I see, my life. And we both looked at each other and we started to cry. Wow. And so we bonded right there. And then we went through interview techniques. We were going through books. We would read books. There was a film that I would ask her to watch called The Native Son. She would watch the Mm -hmm. film. I would give her a book. Two different things. It's the same story, but it's different in terms of music, in terms of movie presentation, to book. And I always would trap my clients because they would come back and say, oh, the, oh, the movie is the same as the book. And it's totally different. Yeah. And how do I know yeah. that? I worked on the film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At that time, James hmm. M. Toomey, the two-time Grammy Award winner, was a client of mine. So it was my mentor. And the first movie that we got was The Native Son. That st- that was the first movie role that Oprah Winfrey got. Wow. So wow. I was real clear about this film and what this film was all about. And so Mary and I just began to become closer and closer. And I would go interview techniques. And she would say to me, Angelo, please don't let me, please don't make me watch those videos of my interviews. And I would say, no, you're going to watch them. I watched, we watched every single one. And at the end, I took them and I put them in the garbage. We never have to look at these again. But you wow. need to see what you did. Wow. I I can really appreciate that. I really can appreciate that because especially when I started in the business, we would do the, the, um, the mic checks and, and the tape checks, rather. And, oh, my gosh, I could feel her pain. Oh, my goodness. Sure. You, you were a, wow. But you know, today she has a talk show now. Thanks to you. She has a talk Thanks. show now, and it's so wonderful to find mm-hmm. she's confident. She's confident. She's comfortable. She's yeah. energetic. She's yeah. intelligent. She's articulate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like I've done my job. What I do, Gail, is not it's not a cup of instant coffee. Mm-hmm. I desire for my clients to have brewed coffee. It takes yeah. time. Yep. Yes. And that's what my artist You're, development program was all about. You have an extraordinary way. Um, again, if you're just tuning in, I am talking to the CEO and founder of Double Exposure, Angelo Ellerby. You people have to. You have to listen to him because let me tell you something. I, I have uh, worked with Angelo, uh, booking guests that I've had the honor of having on my show because of him. He's got a new book out, Ask Angelo, an inside look at the entertainment industry from a PR guru, knows his stuff, 46 years of being in the business. And uh, let me ask you, what about you ever being on the silver screen? Can you picture your story being up on the silver screen? I think it's deserving, and I'm sure other stars would agree. Let me tell you. Mm. In 2006, 20th Century Fox brought my life story. 
Wow. And I'm very thankful to this day. Now, let me just tell you the story. When the guy came out to write and get a synopsis on my life, and he would begin to write the script and the whole other bit, he had it so very wrong. He had it that uh-huh. I fell in love with Mary J. Blige. And I said, Mr., you would have me the laughing stock of this industry. Everybody knows the deal on Angelo. Why are we going to sit back and try to do that? That's just not real. I shared the story with Mary, and Mary looked at me, and I looked at her, and we bust out laughing. So now, so now with this book, Gail, it's just so overwhelming because so many people are contacting me, asking me to do document, uh, to document my what? life. I got five emails today, and so wow. maybe, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it'll happen all over again. Know. You see, I think that I have learned by so many of the trials and errors of my clients. And I think what was happening to me in the 90s and the early 2000s is the world was at my, I mean, I'm, they were beckoned. Everything was going on in my life. And so mm. I didn't look at, I didn't look out, look at the importance of sharing my life to the point that it would be on a major motion picture screen. But God is amazing, and he is a very timely mm-hmm. God. He gives it yes. to you again, and this time, Angela is prepared to accept the gifts of life as he sees fit for me to have them. So, to answer your question, all doors are open. All doors are open. Well, you know, if I were to predict, and I've had the blessing of, of talking with you, we've never uh, met face-to-face. You blow me away. You, you, you. Um, are very, your, 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 your essence is very powerful. And at the same time, you are very giving, you're very knowledgeable, you're very sharing. And that's a rarity in this industry. And I'm blessed to, to have the opportunity to work with you. And, and I have a feeling pretty soon I'll have to be talking to an assistant to get you because you're going to be like, oh, this book is going to be a number one seller. I'm telling you Thank right you now. Much. It is going to be a number one seller. And Thank let you me ask much. you this. What is the number one that you've written a book, which is a huge accomplishment, Angelo? Thank what you. is the advice, as you said, for others who are looking to be in this industry? Because, you know, it, it's a dime a dozen. Everybody wants to get on over everybody. But being real, I, I know, I, and I know you had started this in the beginning, but I really want you to come back around in case new listeners have hopped on. Uh, to to hear from you, the expert, the one about this entertainment industry that we've decided to be a part of. What are some of your your biggest keys of advice? Know your business. This is not a part time mm-hmm. job. This is a full time job. Mm-hmm. If you're not going to do it, don't start it. You have to be a business person before you're that artist. You have to understand and educate yourself to the who, what's, the when's, the where's, and the why's, or you will be outside looking in and not inside looking out. You have to be very careful about how you go to select your manager, and you have to be very bold in selecting your manager. You don't want a manager that's going to come directly in and want to see the vision for you. I recommend a attorney at law first. Work with an attorney because an attorney has all the capabilities of a manager. They know all the ANR people. They have relationships with them. Learn from that, and, to, and then you can go into your management situation just as though you're going into a relationship. First is a courtship. You want to end the courtship. You want to get a chance for one another, everyone to know one another, good, bad, and the indifferent. If that works out for six or seven months, then go into an engagement. In an engagement, you get a chance to see the strengths, the weaknesses, and ask bold questions. Uh, Mr. Manager, Miss Manager, do you do drugs? Mr. Manager, Miss Manager, do you drink do you gamble? All these things you want to know. You want to ask some of the. You want to ask every question because you got to remember, this is about to be a marriage, and when it mm. is a marriage, that means that these people take a percentage of your earnings for a lifetime or for the time period of that contract, good, bad, mm. or indifferent, and it's too late after you go into marriage. 
Because when you get to the point that you want to divorce, that's when it gets messy. Mm -hmm. So it's really taking the time, the same energies that you put into your craft as a singer and understanding that you should have a vocal coach, understanding styling, understanding your image and all those things. You got to also understand the business. You must understand what it takes in terms of your royalties. You need to understand what splits and recording and working together. You must under, working together with producers. You must understand that you must get a percentage, a third, a third, a third. You should be uh, involved in terms of your writing and making sure because that's where your money is. Mm -hmm. There's so many artists of yesteryear that just recorded song after song after song, and other people produced them. All they're getting is a performance royalty. They're not getting any other money. So if they don't work and go out there and sing that song a million times, they don't get no money. Yeah. But the producers and the writers are the ones that go to the bank. You must understand that the time that you put in now, it's like getting your Social Security check. You're putting money away, and this is the money that's going to carry you when you get old and dusty and nobody wants to see you anymore. <laughs> that is very true. Very, very true. Oh, my goodness. He is the founder and CEO of Double Exposure, and I am talking with Angelo Ellerby, who is now the author of Ask Angelo an inside look at the entertainment industry from a PR guru. Angelo, as always, it is such an honor to have you on. I want everybody to get their hands on the book. And if you'd be so kind just to direct us in some of the areas where we can do that for you. The book is being sold on Amazon. But I'd like for everyone to come to my new site, which goes up uh, on the 5th of October. The book goes for sale. Our pre-sales go up on the 15th. You can go to dxxnyc.com, which is our new site. Visit it. See all the things that I'm working on. And go and order that book. Yes. Order that book. Absolutely. And then when you finish ordering well, the book, always such a pleasure. tune in to me on October the 15th from 10 to 11. And if you want to talk to me on a personal note, give me a call. 201-224-6570. I look forward to it. I look forward to the show, the book, and more of you. And if you can stick close just with me for just a few seconds. And for those of you, check in. Becoming Gail Scott Keys Entertainment Now Facebook fan. You'll see more of Angelo Ellerby's information posted up on my site as well. Thank you so much. And definitely make sure that you tune in for next week. You can tune in always on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and on Saturdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Thanks so much. Isola is a luxe collection of elegant, distinctive footwear for the modern woman. Inspired by the finest things in life with intricate details, lavish materials, and sumptuous comfort. Isola's refined artistry and impeccable styling are perfectly suited to the discerning woman who knows that exquisite doesn't have to mean extravagant. Visit our website at isolashoes.com. I-S-O-L-A shoes.com. You've been listening to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now, brought to you in part by Isola, inspired women's footwear. Isola's collections are perfectly suited to the discerning woman seeking exquisite design. Visit the website at isolashoes.com, I-S-O-L-A shoes.com. Tune in to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and Saturdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on the Tap the Mic Radio Network. You can also hear the show on Blog Talk Radio and YouTube. Visit and like us on Facebook and tweet Gail at, at Diva, the number 4YOY. I'm Dorian J. Thanks for listening. Entertainment.